Reinhardt. And you can catch it tonight on ABC One at 8.30. Now, a new study has called into question Victoria's plea bargaining system. Victorian law allows some people charged with murder to instead plead guilty to so-called defensive homicide. Now, these laws were intended to allow victims of domestic abuse to defend themselves. But the criminologists behind the study say that the secret plea deals means that many offenders could be literally getting away with murder. Dr. Asher Flynn and Kate Fitzgibbon are criminologists at Monash and Deakin University and they are the authors of this study bargaining with defense of homicide and they're both with us in the studio many thanks for joining us Asha I might ask you firstly this is quite a complex idea take us through exactly what this defensive um, what is a defensive homicide concept? What does it actually mean? Yes, I might pass you to Kate for that particular <laughs> oh, question as I'm more the plea bargaining side and Kate is defensive yeah. homicide. So defensive homicide was brought in in 2005 when Victoria got rid of virtual provocation defence and essentially it operates so that people who are unable to get self-defence but were acting to defend themselves but that belief was unreasonable. So it was unreasonable for them to think that they were defending themselves. It means that those people can be convicted of defensive homicide rather than murder. And how often is it being used uh, in pro before prosecutors involving plea bargains, for instance? Well, we've had 16 cases up until uh, the 1st of April, or the 30th of April, sorry, this year. And of those, I believe only three have gone to trial and the rest have involved plea deals. Right. Now, at the time when this new change came in, I remember Rob Howells, the Victorian Attorney General, sort of really heralded it as a way of actually stopping people using that, that kind of plea to get away, literally, with, with murder. They were often, say, for example, men who had been viol very violent towards women who had, in fact, killed them in the end and got away with that, mm -hmm. rather than for perhaps what, what was intended, which was perhaps men who were victims of domestic abuse. So has the law not really achieved what it set out to? I think that's the thing. I think it certainly was brought in with the best intentions and the government wanted to provide something for women who were faced with lethal violence in that type of situation. But what we've seen is a really different use of it, largely by men who have killed other males. And because of Victoria's secret plea bargaining, we don't know why it's being used in that way and what circumstances mean that it is being used in that way. Based on your research, do you really fear that some people may indeed have got away with murder? I think the thing is we don't know. Mm. That's probably the most frustrating thing is we, because no information has to be given as to why the plea bargain is accepted, we don't know why these cases are falling within defensive homicide, which is a lower offence than murder. And actually, why is it so secret, all of that? It's a great question. Um, for some reason, plea bargaining seems to be remain this non-transparent process, and it's interesting because plea bargaining actually affects the conviction that the person is going to end up with and the sentence that's ultimately imposed. So for some reason, across Australia, there seems to be this lack of understanding of why these decisions are being made, who's motivating these decisions and, and what's behind them, and I think that's one of the key problems. And as we argue in our study, if we look at international jurisdictions, they have more transparency transparent guidelines saying you need to explain why you're making these decisions, especially victims, and even accused can have an understanding of what's going on. What do you say to the argument this is a good thing because it takes pressure off strained resources, not just in Victoria, as you know it applies in every state, reduce, it will help reduce court backlogs, mm -hmm. it's a way of uh, taking the direct pressure off the state's courtrooms? Look, definitely. We think that um, there is a place for plea bargaining. Where our concern lies is the idea that there is no transparency, there's no records, no data kept. So we would suggest that even just when someone enters a guilty plea, keep a statistic. Was it because of a plea deal made? And suddenly we've got some transparency and we can start to look into why these decisions are made, how often and whether we need more accountability around them. And because this can make the difference between, say, a 20-year sentence mm -hmm. and life in prison. Absolutely. And that's what we don't read about in the newspapers and hear as often on the news. We only hear judges being too lenient or judges not taking things into consideration where it's this agreed summary of facts that are prepared by the prosecutor and defence as part of this deal that's ultimately leading to those sentences. And Kate, it seems that this is going to be very hard ever to get the sort of protection that you're really looking for from this type of legis legislation. Is it, it's always yeah. going to, people are going to fall through the cracks, aren't they? I think it's really difficult and I think it's certainly a lot of governments around Australia are looking at it at the moment and other states are trying to do things with their homicide laws. So if we knew a bit more about what was happening in Victoria, other states may be able to learn from it as well. So. Great to see you both. Thanks for coming yeah. in. Thank you so Thank much you for Thank having you. us. Now, plant researchers at the CSIRO in Canberra may have developed a more environmentally friendly alternative to fossil fuels. 